using them because that's going to make a big difference in getting to that place of wellness. Then if you're a believer, of course, I have to tell you, spend time in the word. There is no more truth that can bring you back to a state of wellness than this. Um, cause this is the, this is the truth. This is the only truth that we have. So if, you know, if the little voices in your head are telling you bad things, we all have those voices. This is where you find the truth to combat what they're saying, because this doesn't lie. They do all the time. Our minds lie. Our hearts lie. We are fickle. We are not perfect. This is the truth. This is where we come back to to figure out who we are, to find our worth, to find our value, and to find ourselves again. Um, the oils are great support for that. Wellness in general, taking care of yourself is so grounding, is amazing. Um, taking care of yourself is really, really, really important. And, and that can look differently. So for a season, for like the whole last year, for me, that meant not putting makeup on in the morning and not getting out of my, my pajamas and trying to sleep as much as I could with three little kids. Um, and just, just being inside internally, slowing down, just being okay. It's changing for me now. And now that's starting to look like taking care of myself is starting to look different. It's starting to look like getting up in the morning and waking up and taking a shower and putting on makeup and putting on an outfit that feels cute and makes me feel good about myself and, and approaching my day like something exciting is going to happen or it's going to be a good day instead of just trying to survive the day. These are seasons. Nothing lasts forever. Um, God has got you. He's totally got you and he will not... So I'm not going to say this is, this is what I'm, I'm preaching here now. So if Jesus is not your jam, you might need to say goodbye, but you can listen anyways. I love you regardless. This is not, um, I'm not trying to scare anybody away, but I have to, I have to say this. The phrase that we often hear, God will not give you more than you can handle is total BS. And if I wanted to say Jesus and swear on the same video, I would. It's ridiculous. It's not true. It's not in the Bible. It's not biblical. It's not true. God always gives us more than we can handle. We always have more than we can handle, but he does not leave us alone to handle those by ourselves. We always will have more than we can handle. We will always be afraid of tomorrow and overwhelmed when we start thinking too far ahead. But all he asks us to do is to focus on him, to give him today, not tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. We can't Worry about tomorrow because he can't give us the strength for tomorrow when it's still today. All we have to do, I just was listening to a podcast this morning, um, God Centered Mom podcast, and it's back a couple weeks old one. It's amazing. It's um, the lady who she's interviewing, her name is Grammy. I don't even know her actual name, but she's in her 80s and chock full of wisdom. I was taking notes and I was crying and I was amening. It was amazing. Anyways, one thing that she said was all you have to do. I'm on a video right now. All you have to do is, this is a good example, is get to bedtime. Because his mercies are new every morning. His grace and his strength is enough for today. We don't need to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow hasn't come yet. Do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. And it will. That doesn't mean there will be no struggles tomorrow. It just means today we worry about today. Today, we focus on these 12 hours that we have. We get to bedtime, and sometimes that means to our kids' bed bedtimes. Sometimes that means to our bedtimes. But that's all we have to worry about. Yes, we have to be smart with the future. We have to plan in God's will. We can't just not pay bills because, well, I don't have to worry about tomorrow. My power gets shut off. That's ridiculous. We know that. But we have to. Hi. We only have this day. We only have this day that we need to get through and God will give us strength to get through it. He will not take away so that it's not more than we can handle. That's total BS. He will give us more than we can handle, but he will also stand there and walk with us and he will carry us when we can't carry it ourselves. He will be there to get us through each moment. He gives us more than we can handle so that we have to depend on him and nothing else. Please go away. I could not survive each day without him. I could not. I could not. And I know that so tangibly that it's not even hard to trust in him right now. Um, yes, I forget every five minutes and I have to go back to remembering how faithful he has been. 
And I spend a lot more time looking back than looking forward because looking back reminds me of how good he is and reminds me that I can get through today because he has been faithful in every day and every stage of my life. No matter what choices I've made that haven't co coincided with his will, he still remains faithful and he still blesses in everything through his will. And he is good, and he is faithful, and he is kind, and he is loving. And I don't always understand his will. I never get to understand his plans or his purposes. But I know that God uses everything for his glory. So if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with um, any kind of emotional depression, I'm just going to say all the words, any kind of emotional struggle, here's what I want to tell you. God will use that. He will use that for his glory. And we can only comfort, so I've been spending a lot of time on this chunk of verse in Second Corinthians, and I just was texting a friend last night about it. There's a verse that says, we will comfort by the strength with which we have been comforted, that through the comfort, comfort, comfort it says comfort like 12 times. Go look it up, Second Corinthians. Um, anyways, the point being, we cannot comfort, we cannot minister to other people, we cannot be a light in somebody else's life if we have not first experienced the comfort that comes from Jesus Christ. And if we don't know what it's like to be comforted, we can't be a light for somebody else. So yeah, I've had a lot of struggles, especially this last year. I have had a lot of struggles for the past 10 years in my marriage. I've had a lot of struggles in a lot of ways in my life. We all do, we all have those struggles. And because we have those struggles, we have a ministry to comfort others even if we're still walking it, you guys, I'm right smack in the middle of trying to recover from a painful divorce. And God uses my story in a lot of ways. And it, and it surprises me. It surprises me all the time. No, you cannot because you're interrupting me. Um, she's asking for candy. Okay, you guys. Anyways, I should get off my soapbox right now. Um, the oils will help. They are a huge catalyst. And here's what I want to remind you. If you're struggling with, and, and going so far, I mean, we're already, we're Jesus all over this place. This I should, I'll put a disclaimer in the video when I close. But for those who struggle with, and if you're in this group, you're probably not struggling with this. But if you're struggling with this, why should I be using these things, prescriptions, oils, whatever, when I should just be able to fully depend on the Lord to find that peace? He gave us these oils. He gave us all of these plants in the Garden of Eden when he created the world. Before we even fell and needed them, he put blue tansy and rosewood and um, northern lights black spruce and bergamot and lime. All of these things were in the garden and the essential oil, the lifeblood of the plant was there. And then when we needed that support, he gave us the wisdom to find it and to extract it from the plants and to get the most benefit from those oils. He prepared for this. He knew that we would need it just like he knew that we would need medical professionals and scientists who could come up with things like prescription drugs for when they're necessary. And they can be necessary for a season, but they don't need to be necessary forever. They don't need to be a band-aid forever because there's always another way. And if you're not well, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not finding a way to be a whole person, um, you can't get well and you can't get off those crutches and band-aids that sometimes are so necessary, but it's also necessary to look inside, to take care of ourselves and to be able to move forward. We have to be well, okay? If you're sleep deprived and nutritionally deprived because you're not eating what you should be eating and if you're emotionally deprived because you're not dealing with stuff and you're not using oils that are going to help you or not talking to a therapist or talking to people about your struggles, you're not going to be able to get well. You're not going to be able to heal because your body can't when all, all the pieces need to be moving forward together and they don't move forward all at the same speed. It looks different for everybody, but it's a whole body picture. Just like a doctor is going to tell you to exercise because it boosts your endorphins, whatever makes you happy. Uh, in the same sense, you need to be eating well when you can. And that doesn't mean you have to be perfect. And you need to be choosing to take care of yourself sometimes. And as moms, that's really, really, really hard to do. That's really hard to do as moms. We don't let ourselves take care of ourselves because we're so used to taking care of all the little people in our lives and husbands and family members. 
but you also have to take care of you so that God can minister to your heart and you can be a blessing to others. God will use your story, even if you're right smack dab in the middle or the beginning of it and you cannot see the light through the tunnel. That's not important because all you need to do is get through today. All you need to do is get to bedtime. God will use your story. That is not a maybe. That is not a um, sometimes. That isn't always. God will use your story. Your story will touch more lives than you could ever imagine, and you will never know about those people being touched or affected or encouraged or challenged until we get to heaven. We don't get to know all those things. Sometimes we get glimpses. Sometimes we get people you know, telling us. Um, but we don't get to know all the things that we're doing in our life because that's for God to see and not for us. Um, he will use your story. He is using your story no matter what that looks like. If your story is postpartum depression, if your story is miscarriages or loss, if your story is anxiety, if your story is divorce, if your story is um, perfectionism or self-doubt, if your story is whatever your story is, he's using that story. He will work it for his good. He will give you the gift of comforting someone else because you have been comforted and because of the comfort that you have received through Jesus Christ, you will be able to change somebody else's life. He will be able to change somebody else's life through you because you've been comforted through him. And I'm going to step off my soapbox now and I'll go back and put a little disclaimer for anybody who's scared of Jesus talk because this got a little off track, but go back to the beginning and watch if you want to hear my thoughts on emotions, essential oils, and Jesus. Bye, guys.